Hi everyone, yeah, my name is Trey Budworth and I'm a senior here at Bald Eagle Area High School. I welcome you to our sit down interview with the members of the 1967 Bald Eagle Area Central Counties Championship football team. This interview is being made possible by the Eagle Ambassadors. The Eagle Ambassadors is a non-profit educational foundation. Before we get started, let's go around the group, introduce you to our guests. So if you would say your name, position, and what year you were in 67. Toby Coons, guard, nose guard, and I was a junior. Jerry Leathers, guard, senior. Larry Weiser, running back and defensive back. Steve Weiser, uh, slot and linebacker. Kurt, sophomore, yes. Sophomore. Yeah, thanks. Kurt Everly, senior, uh, quarterback and defensive back. And Tom Fisher, senior, uh, defensive end, tight end. Dave Spear, senior. Running back, defensive back. John Wetzler, senior. Guard, a linebacker. Wide expanse. Tim Justice, senior. Tackle. Tim Cowan, offensive center. Senior. All right, now as I begin, I have a few questions for you guys, obviously. Uh, what were your expectations going into the 1967 season? Anyone want to start it off? To survive. Get crushed. <laughs> To win. <laughs> we wanted to improve upon where we were the previous year. Okay. Okay, you guys had a new coach, right? New head coach, I believe. Yeah. Uh, what were your first impressions of him during your preseason practices? He's scared to live and stuff. Yeah. Fear of his <laughs> me. Definitely afraid of him. Yeah. Which coach? Which yeah. one of them? Yeah. Yeah. Best, uh, how about our man Best? Uh, what, what kind of stuff do you make you guys do? A lot of running or just screaming in your face kind of guy or what? No, oh, that. Best would just be pulled by you. Yeah. You didn't do anything right. I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, a best lot of on hands. Yeah. On hands. Yeah, they showed us what to do. Not how it, not how it used to be anymore, is it? No. 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 Best story about Besh I remember. Right? Center. Besh, uh, he was the assistant coach. He popped the, hel the helmet on. Remember that one here? It had a nose guard, and he got right up against their center and just, just started pounding him. It's going to make us tough. <laughs> and so, it was legal in those days. Then that's exactly it. right. And no one had any camera phones. And then the other, the other big story, you guys know, is uh, Denny Clawson, one I always remember, the old pit we had. Mm -hmm. All right, who was in with him in the pit? Cordy Chambers. Cordy Chambers. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, I mean, whew, thank God he got out of there because he made some big plays for us, you know, you guys senior year, because, but he was getting the crap beat out of him down in the pit, man. He, crawled, he, he was crawling out, crying like a baby. <laughs> man, I think I remember Tom, Tom Fisher uh, in the pit with Trey, uh, one thing about too. Coach yeah. Wilson, who was our new coach, this group right here, the seniors, um, is a unique group in that we went to Baldy Glaria and had three different head coaches. So when we were a sophomore, we had Al Hag. When we were a junior, we had Ken McMillan. And when we were ending our junior year, like you did last year, you know, in May, when you were up here bothering me and stuff, well, <laughs> the bottom line was, um, all of a sudden, we got this new coach, and, and we were called to the to the uh, gymnasium. And we were all sitting there, up like in four rows up, and then in come this uh, new coach, Al Wilson. And he was from Boiling Springs, and we didn't know him from anybody, but um, we got to know him. But the bottom line was, we were pretty good uh, when we were sophomores. Those seniors went six and four. When we were juniors, those seniors went five and five. So we were pretty much playing on two, I was and my other senior classmates were, playing on two teams that were pretty much average. And uh, knowing that we had, I think, 11 or 12 kids in the senior class coming back, we thought we might be good, but we had no idea. And something happened that we had an opportunity. It was like, this guy was here. He changed the whole mindset. Um, when we left there, uh, we looked at each other. He walked out of the gym and we looked at each other and we knew that something special might be going to occur. And, uh, and it just picked up in May, it got better in June. We went to a football camp in the summer that year in Gettysburg. And uh, he, he, the first thing he did was set us in the black dorm down there. 
So here we're Howard and Snowshoe and Port Matilda kids in a completely different environment. And uh, we had to thrive there. And then he, we played touch football down there, seven on seven, ended up doing really well there. And when we left there, it was a completely different mindset. We, we figured maybe we had a shot at being pretty good. If you look around this group, um, there's not many starters in their junior year. In fact, none of us started the whole time. We, we just kind of were pushed in and out from the teams before. But uh, Mr. Wilson got here and it all changed. And, and we started in August then pointing to, to a great season. So he obviously, he brought you guys together, right? I mean, he had a big part of how you guys became close as a team that year, I would think, you say? I think he was the key, wasn't he, guys? Yeah. 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 Was Absolutely. I mean, uh, Al Wilson, to me, was way out of his time. Yeah. Uh, I, I can speak of him very reverently. I think you had the, the days of the Bear Bryant where you didn't drink water, you ran in place, you did all that stuff. Al came in, and, and um, I was talking to these guys today before our first ball game. We weren't sure we were ready for the first ball game because the very first practice we had, we were allowed to take our helmets off, get a drink. We would come out on a Monday. We'd come out on a Monday with just our, our shoulder pads and helmets on, and by Thursday we were just one with our helmets. So two days a week we'd come out in pads for the first game, and that was something completely different. And I said that's really something that they're pushing in the NFL and and I think to college and high school programs today. And this was 40 some years ago. He's using some of the methods that I think um, a lot of modern coaches are using today. Did he come in and change his system completely, or did yes. he? Yes. Did you guys feel you were ready for that first game, though? I mean, whenever it came to the first game against Bald Eagle Nittany, who hadn't lost since 1963 to you 39 guys. Game 39 games. Game. Yep. Yep. 38 0 and 1. You guys shocked a lot of people. I mean, what was that week's practice like? Was it lax? I mean, was it. Was he you really played up? Bali when you played Saturday afternoon. Yeah. You know, when a Friday night game. Extra. So that was a different mindset. But I think as Larry and Kurt said, Coach Wilson came in with a vision. And we bought into what he was, you know, preaching to us. And we were able to uh, see that vision and, and take off from there, from Bali Nittany to the next week with Lock Haven, which hadn't lost at home forever. And after that game, Coach Malinak had their place kicker out on the field as we were leaving in the bus because they missed a couple extra points that were critical. They were running wind sprints. The rest of them were running. So, you know, again, it was a different time period. But I kind of really relate Coach Wilson to the movie Remember the Titans yeah. because they also went to a camp. And we did that type of thing. And so every time I watch that movie, I think of these people here, Coach Wilson, and the, the growing of that team. Obviously, you guys, a special group. I mean, what was your game plan going into that? As offense, defense, did you want to play up tempo? Did you guys want to slow it down? I mean, you knew how talented you were and how talented they were, but did you guys have a different mindset going into that game as of other games? Or? Yeah, you had to play the top of your game. We knew we had to play good. To we had to play game. your best. Yeah. 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 You know, we, we didn't have any superstars. No. No. Right. We were all blue collar. We were kids who wanted to succeed. And uh, we were able to, to do the things they asked us to do. And it wasn't easy, as they mentioned earlier. Practicing for, you know, even though they were out pads, there was still a lot of mental toughness there. Right. And the right. drills we did, a lot, it, of, a lot of up tempo. Up tempo. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that Mr. Wilson did was he looked at the different positions on the field. And we were lucky enough to have enough guys in different positions. Um, Just enough. I played quarterback. Barely. Dave Spear was the fullback. Larry was the tailback. I mean, we, Tim was a lineman. But I'll tell you one story. We were down in Gettysburg, and Mr. Cowan over there ended up as our senior center and played, well, was a super, super center, it was a halfback. And a week, a couple weeks before season, Mr. Wilson went to him and asked him very nicely, he said, and he was our a long snapper. And I'll ask him if he could think about maybe when football started, we needed a center to get this group to gel. We had a tight end. Uh, our split ends in Arizona, he's not here. He was all state, Denny Claus, who was a classmate of ours. But anyhow, 
Tim sacrificed his halfback position, went to the center, and what's the key? Offensively. I sacrificed a, a second team halfback position for a starting center position is what I did. He gave me an opportunity to play the best football I had ever played. And, you know, that's, I think, what I always did on my way out there was to get myself as well prepared and do the best job I could, and everyone else here was right there with me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all we ever did was go out there and do the best we could do under the circumstances. And every time somebody needed to, they stepped up. Somebody stepped up out of this group, not just these guys, but somebody on that team stepped up and did what needed done to keep us in a position to win. And so we did win. I mean, while we're talking about sacrifices, now that Tim made a big sacrifice, off you, obviously. I mean, from going from half back to center, not, I mean, did you have any experience from there, from center position, I mean, just long you know, snapping? I snapped balls since uh, eighth grade for long snaps for punts and extra points, but uh, I was never in the line. Right. I mean, they were trying to run over me when I was snapping that ball. <laughs> but I never, I, I, what was the first thing that I began to appreciate about it? I got to hit somebody every play. Right. I got to handle the ball every play. It was important what I was doing because the ball had to get to Kurt. Exactly. And then everything else went from there. And Trey, you may not realize it, but this guy here was the largest person on our team. Yeah. At 210 pounds. And that was lying. Okay. <laughs> 210 pounds. And he ended up getting a Division I scholarship to the University of Rhode Island. Yeah. Okay. A byproduct. <laughs> hey, hey. Most of us were 160, 170 pounds. You were exactly. weak at your right off. You know, we weren't a very large football team. Full equipment, 170 pounds. Yes. That's what it's I amazing. remember about going onto the field against Baldy Nittany. All the play in time, all I had what two months worth of center training, mm -hmm. and the guy across the line from me weighed 287 pounds. They were monsters. Okay, they were monsters. <laughs> I, and, but we were quick. That's what we were supposed to do. He yeah. said, "Hit him once, drop back. Hit him again, and then he crushed me." And the intimidation factor was there. Time. I mean, you were intimidated. You didn't go up there like, oh. Well, what could you do? Exactly. We, we you had to fight your way out. Yeah, we, <laughs> witnessed, we witnessed a lot of that attitude when we were in that football camp. It didn't matter how people Yeah. Now, I bring up intimidation. Was there anybody on the team that when you got to practice and you got to hit, was there someone you're like, man, I really do not want to face him because he hits me harder? Everybody did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the way of life. Yeah. But Everybody but Klaus. Right. right. <laughs> Dennis, well, he, he tried. tried. He tried, yeah. he tried, he tried but he wasn't <coughs> equipped Then he played as far away from the line as he could, <laughs> as deep in the secondary as he could, but he was very functional. He, he ended. Nowadays, he would have been an all-state safety. Yeah, he was probably he best Nine athlete. or ten interceptions. call them athletes. Eight, right. or eight to ten. I, we, we're trying to figure that out today. Super. And, he had, and I would like Ron Bracken, who uh, we're going to talk after this, but we were talking today at lunch. Denny Clausa had 1,000 yards receiving in 1967. Unheard of. Wow. Yeah. If we, I don't know of any kid in Center County in the 60s except him that had 1,000 yards receiving. Mm -hmm. That's it's, unbelievable. I don't think anybody is, can. Vision Dennis much. stayed away from hard hitting if he could, but he was a key to this team. Oh. He was one of, our, one of the things that Tremendous kept us moving, that. and when it was time, he was there just like everybody else. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm I'm uh, maybe on, I'm maybe I'm not on the, on the Colossal fan club, but I know he was an important part of this group. Plus he could punt. Plus yeah. he could punt. <laughs> plus he could catch. Plus he could run really fast. Yeah. Everyone had more than one job. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Now I'm gonna go back to the uh, Nittany game. Obviously a big game. Is there any stories that in the middle of the game or before the game, the atmosphere, anything like that? <laughs> yeah, you. before the game. Before the well, game. Yeah. Uh, the captains. Uh, we walked out to meet the other captains coming the other way, and. There were three of the biggest, biggest guys I ever saw in my life. <laughs> and when you looked there, when you looked between them over to the sidelines, there was 25 more of them there the same size. Oh, 
and then shook hands and turned around and there was bald. You look at, at the bald eagle team, there was tall ones, there was short ones, there were chunky ones, there were skinny. It was a hodgepodge collection of guys, but there, and there stood bald eagle. And then, I mean, it just looked like troops. Uh, they were monsters. Yeah. And remember, we had those old uniforms. We, we, were, right. we were playing. It was again. so hot. It was pretty scruffy. Oh, yeah. I mean, hot. You were dying for a drink. And our quarterback, he would go over the sidelines, talk to the coach. He said, okay, bring the water out. Ah, oh, we don't need any water. We don't need it. And he's over there drinking. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was I would have never done that. Oh, no, no doubt. No doubt. I, I, half time, those guys feel locked us out. Right? Yeah. 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 No so respect. Half time, the coach. No respect. The, 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 the opposing coach locked us out of the locker room. Walt Deal. Great coach for them, but he locked us out of the locker room. We always played that game the Saturday before Labor Day, which is the first Monday in September, and it's hot, and it was just unbelievable hot. Yeah. They lock us out, and our coach, Al Wilson, is just irate. You gonna let his eyeballs used to fuck out of his head. <laughs> they were long and he, jersey. You gonna let that man, he don't give us, he didn't care about you, you know, and on and on. And we sat there in the heat, just blistering heat. We drank then too, by the way. Yeah, we did get a bomb line was. We came back and they kicked our butts in the second half, but we were able we caused four turnovers inside the ten yard line and stuffed them. And we ended up beating them thirteen to six. And uh, that got her going. Yeah. Right to week two. Uh, right to week two. Right to the Lock Haven matchup where they hadn't lost a home game in four or five years, and you guys ended up winning 14-13. Is there any memories of that game? Well, let me tell you about Lock Haven right out of the gun. They were <laughs> bigger and stronger. <laughs> than that. They had 300-pounders. And a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was a the quarterback. Than 250. Oh, he ended up playing for the Jets. The Jets. Senior right. Senior Mike Packer. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Larry Weiser intercepted two balls off of him. Uh, yeah, they had a guy by the name of Jeff Nahr. Uh, <laughs> He worked out the blue chimney because he was the blue chimney. I mean, <laughs> he was just a mountain of a kid, and uh, they were big and strong. But somehow, somehow we maintained our uh, defensive stature. I... Nor is a fullback, right? Yeah. 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 Boot. I, my Boot. freaking finger never <laughs> recovered from that son of a bitch. He's a big They were both of him and the quarterback they, were houses. They, oh. We were able to maintain enough strength in our defense to keep them up. What ended up... We went ahead 14-13 with a minute to go in the third quarter, and uh, we shut them out the whole fourth quarter. And uh, they were trying everything. They did a lot of trapping. Remember how uh, mm -hmm. uh, Malnick, he played, you know, he's still living. Well, Coach Malnick ran a lot of traps, mm -hmm. and we ended up sticking them. I don't know how, but, but that got us. That was a crazy game. There was people everywhere. Do you remember that? It was the second game on a Friday night. And it, I think the crowd in the paper was like 6,500. You couldn't believe the stadium down there. And they had a little rusty hole in the wall behind the lock, behind the one. Bleachers. Bleachers. Yep. And we won the game 14 to 13. And we, our coach, Mr. Wilson, always had a tradition. You're not even allowed to talk about this in school anymore. Right. But he would light a cigar. They called a victory cigar. He learned that somewhere. And after we won, he liked this cigar while he's talking to us in the locker room. So we went across their field and in this little cubby hole. And remember how there's old them old get splinters and then benches? And we'd be sitting there and he was all wound up. He had the game ball and he wasn't real coordinated sometimes, but he's puffing that cigar, <laughs> telling us how good we did. You look better this week, you had a running game. Larry had a big game, 135 yards and and uh because he was scared and running scared, you know, but he got away from it. But anyhow, we had a good game, won. And this whole time, we're in there looking at each other, and I'm hearing this whistle blow. Whistle blow. So we came out of there, and there was Don Malinak. He was so mad at his team that he lost. They were running wind sprints. The whole crap. We the Lock Haven, you got to walk this way and then up over a bridge. Over the railroad. Yeah. Yeah. So we got across the bridge, they were still running sprints. You guys remember that? Yes. Yeah. I said, never forget. Holy God, we're glad we played for Bald Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> well, after team Coach Wilson would always keep those yeah, up with a tape, right? And tape put them up over the yeah. office in the locker room. Yeah, had been a little baggy. 
And boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Each week he kept adding to the list, you know. Yeah, and there's the cigar. Larry Weiser probably has all of the stubs at his house now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they went. They disappeared somewhere. <laughs> well, after uh, two top of good teams and away games, uh, you guys finally had a home game on week three, and they estimated about 4,000 fans against State College. What was it like at school or getting ready for that matchup? I mean, was everyone just absolutely pumped after the two wins, two loss, or the two way wins? I would say it was, there's <laughs> always a lot of excitement here. We had a lot of school pride. And again, when you have success, it builds. And, you know, the teachers, the faculties talk to you about games. You know, you look forward to Friday nights. You couldn't wait. And uh, I remember for away games, we got blazers. We used to wear, you yeah, know, and tie. shirt and tie, a and blue tie. blazer, bald eagle patch on it and everything. Booster Club, I think, got his sweaters at one point in time. They had an eagle on with a football. You know, a lot of neat things. Yeah. A lot yeah. of good memories. I mean, Cheerleaders weren't bad either. You, know, you always had to take yeah. your toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. Again, Coach Wilson yep. taught us about that, too. Because and he was able to get a victory line of the cheerleaders after you won. <laughs> Maybe that was some of the motivation. Who knows? But you always had to have your toothbrush with you, so after the game, you can brush your teeth. Yeah, some we you had to talk. brush it before the game. And too. before the game. <laughs> after we had steak, after we had steak dinner. Right. We'd have steak dinner. Steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other thing was, we didn't talk about this today, but do you remember how we came back from Nittany and uh, it was kind of, people were, it was hot and we didn't, it wasn't real. It was just, wow, Boulder won. Right. Then we beat Lock Haven and it started. Then pretty soon, all them little kids won their chin straps. Do you remember that? Right. They just fall us around. Between that and the cleats off your shoes. Yeah, we come off the field and we get, our locker room was down here. You had to come, the old locker room down by the gym where they used to play basketball <laughs> and wrestle. And uh, you had to come down to pay for There's the people yeah, yeah. line up and they'd always want your chin straps or something off your them, that's uniform right. because, and they then got it got larger right? until you got <laughs> up to the <laughs> end and then there was a sidewalk of people. Do you remember we could back from games and the people would just be standing there waiting for you to say congratulations. I remember Earl, Earl Holder was there every week his son Jeff because they were just so excited about what we were doing. What was that atmosphere like? I mean, I could only imagine 4,000 fans in Bald Eagle Stadium. I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine. Cars had to have been parked down where Sheets now is. We're getting there it. were games that were bigger. Yeah. You know, 4,000 was small. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Wow. You know. That's unbelievable. Yeah. We were getting oblivious. The game right. was coming up right. was way bigger on the Berg over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Way bigger. Double. But. Yeah, it was. It was exciting. I, I don't know. I was kind of in awe of it all because we didn't really set out this way, but all of a sudden, uh, after the state college game, we had a little discussion. But um, that loss hurt pretty bad, and we just decided that would never happen again. It didn't. So, at nine and one. Well, you guys were down 14 to nothing in a hurry, but battled back and came, made it to 18 to 14. Uh, they ended up, what, finishing game to win 21-18 in the final seven minutes. What, what happened? What happened during that? I think sometimes you learn a lot from a loss. No, we had to bounce back. That's true, but we were we were all scared of State College because of Penn State and the Little Lions, and you know. Yeah. I don't believe Bald Eagle. Did, did we ever play State College before that? Yeah, yeah, we did. A couple of times? You and I walked out to those posts by that um, trailer court now, across the practice field. You and I, John, and you said to me, I don't know if I feel good about this game. And I said, oh, yeah, I do. I said, but it's not going to be easy. I said, this game. What we found out against Nittany and Lock Haven was, even though they were much bigger than us, we were way quicker. And if we, if the quarterback and the coaches knew what plays to run, and, and we had it pretty well scouted, our offense ran because we were quick. And our defense was real good because we were quick enough to get two, three, four guys at the ball all the time, and we hit them. The State College was big, and they were just as quick as us. Mm -hmm. So it was going to be, a, and, and they just had athletes. I mean, they had, 
the same type of athletes we were, but they were all 25 pounds heavier. And it was a it was a dog fight. And they intercepted a pass off me to start the first series and ran it back. So that was on me. Next series, we looked like crap on offense. They blocked a punt and scored a touchdown. Now it's 14 nothing, with three minutes gone in the game. Mm -hmm. At the end of the third quarter, we're up 18-14. Little old bald eagles up 18-14. And then two minutes later, they have this kid that I run me like I was slow, you know. <laughs> and I think his name was Hook, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Went. <laughs> Straight Ralph, up the middle until Ralphie, we, Ralphie hooked till we. Yeah. I couldn't catch him. None of us could catch him. And he scored. What was it? About a seventy yarder. Yeah. And then we were down twenty-one eighteen. And then did the game really got interesting? But we won't go for any further. But that. <laughs> we did good. Though. We never quit. We never. Quit. Coach Wilson called them nickel millionaires. Yep. Never. Yeah. That's all you heard for a week. <laughs> yep. Well, they had a lot of notoriety. I mean, yeah. The paper was behind them, everybody. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. We just couldn't quite pull the trigger. Well, you guys sure did bounce back after that, though, the next three weeks with a combined score of 117 to 2, I believe. Oh, yeah. What was it, the mentality then? Like, you guys just didn't want to lose again? Nah. I mean, that defense, two points in three weeks is unbelievable. And then to get 117 on offense, what what made you guys change? Was it that discussion you had? Or did you guys meet and you're like, wow, we really got to pull it together after that? Yeah, well, we, I think we, we knew we always had it. And, you know, one thing about this team was we all liked one another. There was no fighting amongst any of us. We all got together and whenever we went out there, we got the job done. You know, we, we did it to our best. We we were we got together and practiced a little bit of this today at lunchtime and just went over some of this. But we were talking today, and for Steve and Tobe, they they weren't there. But we we figured out when Wilson came here, he got us a thing on our helmet called the Monsters, and he said that was the first team defense. And he said, I want you to score, not allow any more than 70 points, 10 yeah. 10 games, seven points a game. We figured it out. Our monster defense in 10 games against pretty good competition, in some cases excellent competition, gave up five touchdowns, 30 points. Uh, we gave up one touchdown to Ben, two to Lockhaven, one on defense at State College. So in the first three games, we gave up four. The next seven games, our defense, first team defense, gave up one touchdown. That was the Jersey Shore last, last game. That is, in a stretch of six games, we had scored the opposition 183 to 14, and the two touchdowns that were scored against Penn's, Penn's Valley scored, Clearfield scored, were the last minute of the game against the JVs. So we actually are, we had six straight shutouts. And I, I got thinking about this. I really haven't really looked at those stats and thinking about it. And I coached with Gallon Stoker here for years and had lots of good kids and lots of great teams and loved doing it. But I, this team is awesome. This team right here. That You can't find stats like that. And when you go six games and don't give up any points, six straight games, we played an undefeated team with an all-state linebacker. Or was he all American? What was all American? All American linebacker. Yeah. Nasty Alphon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had Chief Logan had a guy by the name of Sam Pickett, yeah. who was yeah. a left-handed quarterback. Who was big deal quarterback, right? We picked them off five times in one game. Just, just incredible stuff. Uh, they. And if you go back into history and look at the year before, we went over to Chief Logan and they pounded the snot out of us the year before. So we pounded us not out of them the next year. So it's just defensively, we were good offensively, but defensively, I am amazed at what we did. Uh, we figured it out today. We had, what, 19 interceptions and 17 fumble recoveries. Yeah. So we had 36 turnovers in 10 games. Wasn't a bad coaching staff. Coaching Great staff. staff. Yeah. Yeah. Forty some years later, <clears throat> I find out that these teams had bigger kids than us. I never do that. When I've listened to Tom's story, and to be honest with you, 
I was a master motivator along with Dan and Alex Murniak and those guys. Uh, I, I watch every guy on this stage, how much they personally grew. I mean, I didn't know Tom Fisher and Dave Spear and John Wetzler they be, and, and Timmy Justice and Tim Count. They became people, and Kurt Heverly, my brother here and so forth, and, and Tucker here and, and, and Toby. They became something I never would believe they could become, and myself. I mean, Al really had a lot to do with it along with his staff. Yeah. I mean, we were playing at a level that that we never have in the past, and and uh, it just continued each week. So, I mean, did the did the student body really embrace it? Did they realize something special was happening? There I mean, were. They had some pretty good pep, pep rallies <laughs> in that <laughs> gymnasium over there, the one that's right across from here. And there wasn't any way that you could hear what anyone was saying. It was just so loud. Everything was reverberating from that. We were standing in there being shook by the whole thing. And Wilson was talking up there. He was talking to him. And we were standing there. And it was like, man. And then, you know, so you, you got this far off the ground just standing in there. And then you had to get your feet back on the ground again to get ready to play. And so it took some time to uh, to get ourselves back in a in a mind to play. We were hyped up, but you had to be thinking to play. Yeah, and there was no victory dance. It was a post game dance. Remember that? Right. Yeah, they changed it. I remember the uh, pep rally with Belfont. <laughs> Coach Wilson got our superintendent, Dr. Clauser, to come into the the gymnasium and speak to us, and. He ended up having a, a nice shirt and tie on. But by the time he was done speaking, he ripped off his shirt and tie. <laughs> and there he had a white t-shirt. And on that white t-shirt it said, the Victory Cigars will not light tonight. <laughs> okay? And we go over to uh, Belfont. Pre-game, there's a knock on the door. Coaches open the door and there's a big box. Delivered to the locker room oh, yeah. of cream cakes, cream puffs. <laughs> and again, the cigars won't light tonight. And that's all it took. We come flying out of that locker room. <laughs> and again, they had won 13 in a row. And they were undefeated. We were 5-1. and one, They were 6-0. and oh. We didn't play it the last game of the year. So you weren't but, nervous at all going in that game? Nervous? No. no. Heck, we, we relished the opportunity. Yeah. Yep. Because, again, it was another chance to put something in their larger, back pocket. It was larger crowds. So, oh, 8,500 fans it was unbelievable. estimated. I mean, today's world, no one has a clue. I wouldn't do it this year. I had had three months, maybe, worth of training as a center. They knew I was going up against this uh, nasty uh, all-American linebacker. linebacker. Man. <laughs> and I stayed. These guys went in the locker room. This is the way I remember it. Three coaches kept me out. They all had on red number 50 jerseys. I snapped the ball to one of them. The other two knocked me over backwards. I snapped the ball again. They knocked me over backwards. They switched around. Another guy knocked me over backwards. <laughs> And they did that for half an hour, and then said, go on in. And by the time I got to Belfont, number 50 red jersey was <laughs> the thing that I hated the most in the world. <laughs> and every, every thought I had for that whole week was about that jersey. I didn't know the man Nastis. I've met him before. He taught here in the school. But, you know, that's the way they prepared us. And they never crossed the 50. One time. And we got cheated out of a touchdown down yeah. by the scoreboard. Yeah. They said we didn't cross the goal line. Yeah. We, but then some guy we picked had, up a fumble and rambled 47 yards towards the ticket booth. And he could ramble in those days. <laughs> I'm not sure today, but he rambled. How many of us can ramble? Anybody <laughs> can ramble? All right. That's a pretty appropriate description. <laughs> and no one touched him. <laughs> Oh, uh, are we on the Belfont game then? We are. Yeah. We're on the Belfont game. <laughs> How could we not be? <laughs> Which one was that? <laughs> well, that, that was the crowning moment, let's face it. That was a pivotal point because we, we had got nipped at State College by three, and, and if we were going to set the wins record or do anything 
and just refused to lose. We couldn't let Belfont beat us. They kicked our living butts the year before. 54 to 54 six. to six. And uh, we were a little bit disgruntled group at that time. But uh, we, we were bad. Now, the game ended up seven nothing. The only point scored was that fumble. Right. But we had a touchdown call back. Larry, with 31 John up the middle on a trap play. It's the number 50 got uh, out of position. And then the first drive, I want to talk about the yep. first drive. One thing about this may be unique today is that Coach Wilson entrusted us into different things. He had three captains on this team, and they were leaders of the team. I was the quarterback, and he would sit down with me and talk to me about what I thought and how I was going to run this game. I called all the plays. And of course, through his guidance, he had taught me, if you run a play and it gets eight yards, you run the darn thing again. Because until they fix it, and when they bring a guy over and fix that, they're weakening the other spot. So I'd always run the same play, and I'd be looking over here, who'd they bring over, and then I'd hit them over there. That's how I did the whole season. They couldn't figure it out. But anyhow, so he had, let me do this, and we went, and he had eyeballs, like coach, Tim Cowan, he wanted to kill 50, and we had Dave Spear there, and he was a heck of a running back. So I just thought, first play, we're gonna go right at 50. See what Sam's got. We gained 10 yards. Well, what's the rule? Hey Sam, we're coming again. <laughs> right down the field, play after play. Right. The whole way down, and we scored, and they wouldn't give it to us. Remember that? Yeah. They, they picked up Dave Spear and carried him 10 yards back <laughs> and hauled him to Dave for twisting his neck on the way back <laughs> and never did penalize Belfont. But the bottom line was that set the tone, that drive set the tone. Even though we didn't score, it was, it was on them. And then defensively, we just pounded them. Uh, I think uh, we looked today, they had 32 yards passing and 53 yards rushing. The first time Bill Luther was their coach, he's a Hall of Fame guy. He was a great coach, good good guy, great coach. Uh, but we just crushed him. The play that I want to talk about one time is what I saw before the fumble. There it is, before it bounced up in the air and I got to score. They had a running back, uh, Denny DeWitt. He was a junior. He's a pretty good kid. Ended up playing uh, center field for Penn State baseball. Yeah. He's a really, really good athlete. Well, our defensive coaches had us trained to watch our keys. So if the tackle blocked down, we had a 6-2. If the tackle blocked down, they were running this way. If, the, if they went to the next level, you knew they were running the opposite. So we had this whole figured out. So I saw a tackle, they double teamed our tackle, and they were going to kick our end out. And they were going to run Denny Dwitt, and they had a big eye, so he's like six yards deep. And I see him start to come, and I'm a cornerback. And I start up there, and I think, i got to hit him right at the line. Out of nowhere comes Mr. Wetzler. <laughs> Puts a lick on him. Just smashed him. And as soon as he hit him, like he was over here, Ball went right up in the air and took one hop and popped right up in front of me. There it was. <laughs> and I was going, I picked it up off, the, you know, right before it hit the ground. And of course, I was going that way. Everybody else was going. It was an easy touchdown. But uh, it was unique that the defensive touchdown won that game because offensively, we had, we had done very well too. But, but uh, with a game like that, there had to have been some jawing around, some pushing. Was there any of that going on? In well, the we knew a lot of the players from playing against some baseball off seasons, and then DeWitt's mother. We, our mothers worked with her mother. It was a very intense game. Do you remember what happened at halftime with the towel, Larry? Yeah, I mean, Al, we talked about this towel. Al brought this towel in. I, in fact, still have it. White towel, red letter. And it was the same thing that had been, had been an earlier message with his cigars, no towel, or no matches to light your cigar. It has matches on it, no matches in it. No matches to light your cigar tonight. A towel to dry your tears tonight. So, Wow. Yep. 
Uh, now with that huge victory, now we'll go past the Belfont game. Gave you guys six wins with three left. If you went out, you'd break the wins record. Was there any doubt in your mind, or was that the goal the whole time? Were you guys thinking, we got this? Or is it more like, whatever happens, happens? I saw the question earlier, and I just I think it was always a week to week thing. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, anything yeah, 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 beyond yeah, really that. Right. Wasn't Curious anything was behind. Fine. But it, I mean, didn't matter the opponent. Just until the locker room no. Jersey Shore game, right? The, of the game, he let us know then. Right. I, I think I think the one thing that I agree with that, but I think um, one thing that happened during the season, and for me personally, now that I think back on it, uh, as it got going, and we did a little better. A little better, even though we got bumped on that loss by three to State College. When we started putting leather on people, I couldn't wait to play the next game. I just was so proud to be on this team, and I just knew that we weren't going to have any weakness. Uh, we had a little goofy sophomore we had to put up with for the first couple of weeks <laughs> till he learned how to play. Let's face it. And he became a middle backer he did. Under, with you. Yeah. What a team we were. It was right. great. <laughs> he kept me in line. <laughs> hey, guys. The opposite. And then we had line, our, our defensive end. I mean, it's just, we had, it was really fun. And I think, you know, now I think back on it, each week we just look forward to playing. And I don't think we, the last couple of weeks we even cared about the competition, did we? We went out and had fun. Yeah. We enjoyed ourselves. We felt good about, I mean, we weren't beat up as we had been in the past at the end of a week's practice. Uh, we were prepared mentally. We'd been given some extra stuff to think about for the next team, but it wasn't like, you know, this is going to be the real obstacle in your year. You're going out there and you're going to have fun and you're going to beat these guys and do what you, and, and that's one thing. Everybody seemed to be concentrating. Everybody was remembering their keys. Everybody was doing the things that the coaches had told them to do. And so if, if we did that, everything worked. Did you guys have the title on your mind, though? I mean, no. with two, no. 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 that was never a priority no. for you guys. No. It was just all about being a part of something that was special. All gravy after the season. Just keeping no. those game shoes yep. clean. That's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think this outfit like losing to state college, and we just refused no. to lose. I just don't. I no, I did. So no. Lloyd Palmer. Did he kick up into the senior year? I think so. Yeah. Take kickoffs and field goals. I don't mm -hmm. know how many field goals there were, but he kicked off. Right. So now here, week nine, you go to Clearfield and you destroy them 40 to six. And the monster defense, you know, you guys talked about it. Six turnovers that game. Key offensive weapon that game. <laughs> Key offensive <laughs> weapon that game. Yeah. We started to play. We were playing, right? right. Okay, so tackle eligible. Yeah, we, we started right. on a tackle yeah. eligible. They didn't even have any inkling of it. But we put it into the lineup that week. It felt more like a backyard football game at that point in the season? Or what was it? It was just well, kind of like... Never like, that. felt like they never didn't have, that. A right. Not clear. They didn't have a chance. Right. Right. What it felt. Right. Well, I checked that article, too. For He, he made the first fumble recovery. And uh, we scored a couple of plays later, but the whole first quarter it was nothing, nothing in Clearfield. We didn't look good, and it said the paper uh, Wilson was mad about the first quarter. But the next two we scored, four, the next five minutes we scored 28 points, and that's just the way we were. But that was all from defense to offense. Um, he found. He had a fumble recovery. I intercepted one pass at, during that stretch for, that got us in position for a touchdown. His fumble, Paul Hodge, I think, had a fumble recovery that game that got us a touchdown. And so it was like we he inter started it, and we scored, and they, they couldn't do nothing. I mean, we just thumped them. I mean, six I think six straight times we got the ball from them and scored. And then we were out, and they scored on our JVs with a minute to go. And uh, but. Hall, and then we can go to week 10 then, where you guys went to Jersey Shore and prevailed 28-20. Uh, gave you guys the most wins in a season, being eight by the 1963 squad. 
and it gave us our second Central Counties League title in school history. What was it like afterwards? Were you guys known as like the kings of the school? Was it was it really? Nah. Were you guys really <laughs> talked about? No. I mean, back to normal. Yeah. Back to normal. Once the season was well, over, it was you got to play another sport. Everyone wanted right. to play Everybody wrestle, played basketball. Just the other schools hated us. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was a little different. They, I, a lot of these guys did a lot of college trips. Um, they, you know, I don't. I don't think that season ever got out of anybody. I, I know we went back to normal and everybody did their thing, but um, it's what I talk about you a lot. Playing with this group. You go to like coming and play four years and you never left there. You've coached, you've been there 48 years or something like that. Yeah. Coaching and playing. Right. Wonder where you got the love for the game. Maybe it was your sophomore year. Right here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my end of it was, I mean, being a sophomore to be uh, playing with these guys here. I mean, you know, and I, some of the stories I remember, some of them I don't because, again, being a sophomore and not being among the group there. But uh, it was great. I Probably the thing I remember the most is probably, I'll be honest with you, the Jersey Shore game. I remember that game, and of course, I, I, as a matter of fact, I was on the phone with Coach Girardi on the way up, and my uh, college coach was the head coach down there, and they, and they had a heck of a team down there, and that was the one year, you know, that we were able to, you know, pound them and uh, get a big win. It was a big win because they had some great players, and of course, he reminds me of my junior year, your senior year too. <laughs> we had all these block punts out here. Yeah. We lost that one. Yeah. And then my senior year, but yeah, that, that was a great game. I'm sure, you yeah. took your beatings as being a sophomore on this team. Yeah, all yeah. practice. I remember the old uh, uh, what the heck? Is it? Remember Rich, uh, Lewis? Lewis got a little. Don't mention that. Yeah, we'll mention Lewis on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little hazy, bro. We mean that little pink, those little pink bellies, man. We'd yeah. be in trouble today. Oh. Yeah. I forgot them. Yeah. Yeah, he almost set it up at the hospital. So, but I'll tell you what, I, I ran into Al. I want to mention this here. I mean, obviously, I played against him. I mean, he went on. He just, I mean, he, the guy was a motivator. And I don't know if you said this, John, or not. I mean, but. I mean, I, who do you think put the cigars in, in the, uh, the cupcakes outside the damn locker room, right? Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, yep. yeah. 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 I mean, I yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you said it, but it, it was his towel. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It was his yeah. Empty package. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but the the thing I remember about that, just to, to put it to put it in a in a, a way, uh, our mascot. It was the first year we had a mascot in a costume on the field. Dave Alexander. Uh, was the first mascot wearing an eagle. He was in that locker room at halftime when we were in there. And that towel came in and that coach whipped us up. And the words that uh, Dave, all he could say was witness, if he'd have told you guys to turn around and chew your way through that concrete block wall, you would have done it. Yeah. And we turned around and went out the door and chewed our way through that team instead but you know that's that's the kind of motivation we got from all of those coaches Dan Besh was a quiet man but he knew what he was talking about and he put the ideas in your head and you remembered what he said and those were the the points we were well taught we were well prepared psychologically emotionally for every game now went on and I went on to do that same type of thing uh, down Delaware Valley. I, mean, I think he initially he left one after one year. I think he went as assistant. He went to uh, Temple. William Penn. William down in Harris. He was down William Penn. Then he went to Temple. Temple. Del Val. And then he went to Del Val. Matter of fact, Princeton, I think too. Yeah, he was yeah. at Princeton. Princeton. Then he wow. came over there because and then I, he called me in 1980 when I I'd been playing like coming I coached there and, and wanted me to get down there and coach with him, which I wasn't ready to make a you know a security type thing. I felt good about where I was at and that. But what a great guy. Great, and I think I don't remember. Did he, did he do things over at his house with the family? Or oh, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, that's he that's a thing. And he's again, that's that's the type of thing your guys talk about today. He, he made you feel important. He made you feel uh, part of the family. Thursday that was hard with pictures Thursday nights, right? To our mothers. Right. Thursday you know. night we were over to his place. Watch, Watch film. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. 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 And I think you know, I'm kind of unique to this group because. I've coached up the road here or down south about five miles. And a lot of things that I learned from Coach Wilson and his staff, I incorporated into my teams and, and with my staff. 
and we were able to be successful there as well. But I would take kids to my, my house on Sunday nights and uh, watch film. My wife, cheerleaders, other students would come and make them strombolis. In today's world, you can't do those types of things. Mm -hmm. You can't have students come to your house or players come to your house a shame, and do that dude. type of stuff. It really is. It's but a shame. realistically, those are things that I think were ingrained in us. And I think pride and tradition and that field out there, you know, we put a lot of hard sweat, work equity into that. But again, it paid off. And I think that's something that, from my perspective, has taught me what is possible. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And I still believe that today. Well, with a great successful season, does anybody have any other memories they'd like to share before we almost wrap this up? But Kurt does a lot of talking, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Trust me, working, working with Mr. Dyke over there in the office, I've had some interesting stories through his perspective, all kinds of things. It, I I mean, it's, it's entertaining, it really time. is. <laughs> and he's the oldest here. Yeah. He's, the oldest. he's the leader. He's the elder statesman. He should speak more. I'm going to say something else. Might as well. You blame me anyhow. <laughs> I think what's missed been missed in history now that I think about this is the fact that that defensive unit was so outstanding. I'm going to try to get with Bracken and sometime maybe figure this out, but <laughs> after evaluating each game and looking at it, five touchdowns off of varsity in ten games. We played Bowling and Nittany who had won a game in the Orange Bowl the year before. They went to Florida and played in the Orange Bowl. We played Lock Haven. They were studly. They hadn't lost at home for years. State College was way bigger than us and faster than us. Belfont was the king of the walk. But to do what we did defensively, when the year before we didn't do very well defensively. I don't know how we did it. I think these guys here that didn't play a lot as juniors and all, all the things that they did were just, I don't know how they did it. I, Tim Justice ended up an all-state tackle, 210 pounds. Mm. I mean, think about that. You know, it's just it's the greatest thing we ever did together, and I always appreciate oh, yeah. it. I just like to add about this, the school, the teachers. I mean, um, this is a great place to grad to go to school back then. I'm sure it's still a great place today. Um, and uh, from our senior class to to the community, I mean, we talked about the number of people coming to games. We had great a great support back then. Oh yeah. And even in those years before that, before uh, this this community was very supportive of all of our programs. I mean, even our wrestling program, you couldn't get people in enough. It, there wasn't enough room in the in the gym to watch a game or watch a match. All right. Uh, One thing I want to just real quick. Oh mention, no, from you're from my perspective, uh, coaching. Of course, I get a lot of heat from some of these guys that are head coaches from Philly. You know, Philly's the best football time. I'll be honest with you. I mean, the years I've coached now, I mean, it's dropped off in certain areas. I'm, I love to recruit to Central PA. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the, the roots are here and so forth. But the small schools, some of our best football players, some of the guys we have in our, our, in our Hall of Fame and all America, guess where they're from? These small schools, and these guys get overlooked. I mean, I, got, I recruit these small dinky schools going down down the river there in uh, like Halifax, Williams Valley, probably not even heard so many schools, but back here it's the same type of thing. We've had some great Absolutely. players that have come out of, you know, the central PA area, you know, so it's, uh, to me it's a great football and, it's, and it's, it's, it's what football is all about, you know, on a Friday night. Now, did any of you guys have any life lessons you'd like to share with any of the, the football players now or anything that you learned from this team this season? I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, is there any anything that you took from this that helped you later on in life? There's really not a, uh, a limit to what you can accomplish if you open yourself up and give it all that you've got. That 110% thing, you know, it's impossible, of course, but you're only ever given 80 until you figure out how to let it out. And I think that's one of the things that we learned is how to let it out and 
really do as well as we could, really put ourselves in a position where we were doing the best job that we could with the bodies, with the brains, with the team that we had. And that magic four-letter word, team. You, yeah, uh, it's everybody a, a, sacrifices for the common goal, whether it's some uh, running back that comes to center or unselfish play, different places than that was. Well, that's, the ball went around all over the place. And everybody who was blocking, you know, we didn't get, our names aren't, we're in the roster, you know, <laughs> uh, in the, in the uh, newspaper. We're not in the article, but... That didn't bother us. We went out and blocked for the guys who were running. They were scoring. They were catching. And you know, we they, were winning. They, and we were winning, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and so that was our job, was to be the team. And we were the team. And I, I think you gotta give a lot of credit, uh, not just to the guys here, in your leadership, the seniors, yeah, that's important, and it's still today, but also the head coach, Al Wilson. I mean, Al was one of those guys I get goosebumps saying, I mean, he was one of those guys when I had a coach in college, like his coach Jardy, that you'd go through the wall, just like you said earlier. I mean, there was something about him. He had that charisma that you would, you would want to go out and play for him, and, and you didn't want to let him down, right? you know? And not just him, but, you know, you got Besh there putting his helmet getting there. Those guys got right down and dirty with us. Yeah, right. well, Wilson would have five. stayed another year. Yeah. We would have had just as good as team. Oh, my God, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt. Two or two years of growth, yeah. Yeah, yep. if you had stayed another year, yeah. we would have been just, a just I mean, as good. They, you know, yeah, I won't say. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were talking today about if Mr. Wilson would have came when we were sophomores. Right. How good would Stoney's year been and Terry Erickson and them and then our, my junior year, they had a heck of a group of athletes yeah. if they were, but the motivation, it wasn't. Somehow, playing for three different head coaches, our senior class was really lucky to get the motivator at the end because it took us over the top. It really did. Here's what you're saying. I tell us kids all the time in recruiting and so forth. The one thing you want to know about a football coach, if I'm a player, all right, does that guy care about me when I'm not on the football field? Does he care when I'm in the hallway, the classroom, whatever? And that's what Al Wilson was and the coach the radio I had. And there's other coaches out there, they care about you on Friday night. That's it. But I, I got the feeling, even though I was young, and you guys can relate to it more than me, and I'm not you know, going to be critical of anything else, but this guy, you just had that feeling you, you knew he cared. You know? and, and his staff, which you said earlier. I mean, we had some great guys there that I mean, we, just, we melted together, you know? and that makes a difference. You know, Kurt alluded earlier that very few of us played varsity a whole lot. Okay? As ninth and 10th graders, we were on JVs. With the exception, if I remember correctly, Kurt, right. as a 10th grader, got to play varsity. But one of my greatest memories is remembering that Kurt Heverly, as a sophomore, got to go play varsity. And I look forward to Friday nights going and watching him to see if he would get in a game, you know? But as a member of our class, I was very excited about him being able to be called up to play on Friday nights, if needed. Definitely as a backup. But again, today, I don't know if kids feel that same way or not. No, but I know from I'd myself and from my team heart, team. I felt really excited that one of my teammates was able to be called up on a Friday night. And I don't know if that, that happened. Happens. It was great. Anything else you guys would like to add before we wrap it up? No?